Hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the third session of uh, safety scanning technology. So the next important part in the case of uh, the preparation of the containers is basically uh, the containers as we discussed uh, it is made uh, with uh, different kinds of metals, different layers of metal. But uh, an exposed metal cannot come with contact with food material. So some kind of coatings need to be provided over that uh, metal layers. So there are different kinds of protective and decorative coatings uh, are used in uh, canning technology. So it is generally it is known as lacquering. So the, the very purpose of such kind of coatings or lacquerings are they protect the metal from the contents. Basically when anything come, come in contact with metals, there is a chance that either the metal ions may interact with the components within the food or within the enclosed contents or either the content can interact with the metal. So either of this can happen. So they, this kind of coatings or lacquerings protect the metal from the contents. And also they avoid contamination of the product by metal ions from the container. So either way there is a protection from metal to the food or food to the metal. And also they facilitate manufacture. So basically the coating will basically make the metal surface more workable and uh, you know like flexible all that properties. And uh, so and also the sanitary appearance is actually given by the different kinds of coating. So they basically facilitate the manufacture of the metal containers and also they provide a basis for decoration and product identification because the printable surface of the metal is actually coated with a particular kind of coating or lacquering so that the printing and various kinds of designs the brand names etc can be properly exhibited over the surface also they form a barrier to external corrosion and aberration so uh, external corrosion or aberration means uh, the external part of the metals especially is exposed to external elements such as moisture oxygen etc and since the metal tend to react with oxygen and other gases so different kinds of uh, metal oxides can form and uh, this may eventually result in corrosion of the metal. So these kind of coatings uh, tend to protect such uh, activities. So, so they form a barrier uh, to external corrosion and aberration also. So these are the basic function of the coatings. So as we discussed, uh, there are basically two types of coatings. One is called as internal or food contact coatings and one is uh, external or non-food contact or decorative coating. These are the two types of coatings that are generally applied over the can surface. So in the case of internal coatings, their sole purpose is to protect the food from the metal. So protection of the contents from the metal. You know that every like most of the metal is basically steel and iron. So iron basically pick up uh, in beer or discoloration of some kind of dark colored fruits such as uh, plums and strawberries uh, due to metal contact. So Metal contact can actually convert the contents uh, into different kinds of forms or the, when the food come in contact with the metal contents, they can alter the basic nature of the food like color, taste, etc. So these kind of uh, internal lacquers protect uh, from such uh, things to happen. And also protection from the contents of the can, example acidic soft drinks which may corrode the uncoated metal or some fish, meats and soaps or uh, which may cause sulfur staining. The foods are basically classified based on pH like high acid foods or low acid foods or sulfur containing foods. If the, the metal is exposed to acidic components of the food, there is a high chance that uh, the acidic nature of the food can corrode the material. That is one part of the issue. And another one is that certain food contains uh, different components such as sulfur. That the sulfur which is contained within the food can interact with the iron and the certain sulfur blackenings. So different kinds of uh, undesired kinds of discoloration may happen to the food. So the metal and the food has to be protected from these kind of changes. So that is the basic function of the internal or food contact uh, lacquers or coatings. So then what is the purpose of external or non-food contact or decorative coatings? So they basically the protection from the environment. Example atmospheric corrosion etc because of the oxygen and uh, they provide a decorative surface labeling and consumer information that is one uh, purpose and also they influence mobility of the article during filling operations for example beverage cans can only be filled with an external decoration because no internal coating can, can be provided in the case of beverage cans so what provides and this kind of external coatings a necessary friction provides the necessary friction or mobility to pass through the filling head so different kinds of mechanical uh, procedures are there so this kind of uh, coatings will make the container more suitable or more movable and uh, you know like uh, flexible to move through that uh, procedures so as we discussed uh, the coatings or the lacquerings added are either to protect uh, the metal or the food from interaction between each other or to protect the metal from the outside elements 
so basic food lacquers are made with resin also the resin or the component will be supported by a drying oil complex because the oil resin uh, cross linking can happen and form a uniform layer and there is, there is going to be different kinds of additives also such as uh, different kinds of dryers uh, are added accelerators are added plasticizers dyes pigments etc are also added and also there will be a solvent to mix all these components together like uh, either an alcohol or water based these are the basic ingredients or basic components of a normal food lacquer coating the resins can be of two types either natural or synthetic resins the natural resin called as oleo resins oleo resins are basically plant origin resins and synthetic resins are basically like you know liquid monomers of plastic different kinds of plastic based uh, liquid monomers are used for as synthetic resins so most common resins that we use are epoxy resins or uh, thermosetting uh, polymers so but currently the main problem with the epoxy resins are is the presence of bisphenol a or bpa which is having lot of carcinogenic and other, other health effects currently this epoxy resins are uh, the industry is trying to replace uh, with other kinds of resins rather than epoxy resins because of the presence of bpa so there is also epoxy phenolic uh, which is the most common kinds of uh, resins used it is basically uh, there is a phenolic other than, other than the epoxy component there is going to be phenolic plus an aldehyde component so currently the studies are concentrating on replacing all this epoxy component but uh, this is one of the most common kind of material used to prepare the lacquers currently because of various properties and also why means tin and aluminum they react with food that we already discussed that the metals react with food so the this kind of protective coatings is an essential so earlier like normal different kinds of methods were used like china wood oil or the natural resins can have were used now it is basically epoxy or other similar kind of synthetic resins so it is basically the resins or this lacquers are applied prior to can fabrication along with heat or uv radiation or uv treatment so to set the resins the resins are applied on the metal sheets and either they are heat treated or uv treated so that it forms a Uh, normal coating and basically it is a thermo setting uh, material so it will when we apply heat or uh, uv light they will set into a normal coating then also oleo resins why they are most using is means oleo resins are cheap other than cheap means it is uh, oleo resins uh, have a limitation like it has less workability compared to epoxy resins so the most common epoxy that we use is ep uh, epoxy chlorohydrin or ech different kinds of materials that we use has different kinds of properties for example oleo resin uh, that we already told that it is cheaper but it has a barrier and workability issues are there but epoxy resins uh, have this property like flavor retaining property chemical resistance property mechanical properties so that is why epoxy resins are widely used and also epoxy phenolic resins are specifically used they are basically universal resins so they can be used for uh, both acid and sulfur resistance both acid foods as well as sulfur containing foods it can be used and also there is epoxy amino resins are also there it is also universal that but it is mostly used in beer and other kinds of beverage cans and also different kinds of thermoplastic like uh, polypropylene or uh, like polypropylene polyamide uh, like composite films are used or polyethylene terephthalate pet films are used so different kinds of thermoplastics are also used uh, as a coating other than this kind of oleo resins epoxy resins epoxy phenolic resins or epoxy amino resins so can coatings are applied to metal and after the application there is generally it is uh, followed by a thermal treatment or a thermal curing or uh, different kinds of uv treatment is also made or it's also called as uv curing so it is a cure schedule or it's a like also it's known as a stoving method a uniform dried film has to be formed on the metal so most coatings are applied as a wet film and the major constituents in a can coating as applied to the metal includes a different kinds of uh, resins are there different kinds of cross link linking materials additives solvents as we discussed different kinds of application methodologies are also there for applying these lacquers so so lacquers can be applied in a following different kinds of methods such as uh, electrophoretic lacquers like similar to electrolytic uh, metal coating different kinds of electrolytic method is also used for depositing lacquers over the metal surface such methodology is known as electrophoretic lacquering method methodology and also there are there is a dip applied lacquers metal sheet is dipped in a lacquer uh, layer so they are called as dip applied lacquers and also brush lacquers are there where the lacquers are applied using a brush 
over the metal surface and also there are spray lacquers. Normal spraying is used to uniformly distribute the lacquering material over the metal surface. There are also different kinds of uh, trade terminologies that is used for different kinds of lacquerings. For example, uh, oleoresins as we have discussed, it is a combination of resin and oil. So, in the case of fruits and vegetables, the metal or the material, the oleoresin that we use is called R enamel. So, R stands for the regular kind of thing. Regular enamels are basically acid resistant uh, kinds of enamel. So, in the case of fruits and vegetable cans, uh, R enamel uh, resins can be used. And also, the case of corn. Corn was one of the major food that was canned initially, the vegetable material that is canned initially in a wide range. But the corn is also has sulfur components are there or sulfides are present in corn. The, the issue with sulfides or sulfur components is that it will react with iron and form iron sulfide or iron blackening can happen. So such in the case of corn, it was basically the sea enamels were used. So it, the sea enamel means corn enamel. So because uh, the enamel that is used or the lacquer that is used uh, for corns, for canning corns, uh, contain zinc oxide because what happens is that zinc oxide uh, will react with sulfur and form uh, sulfur and zinc complexes will form instead of iron sulfur it is zinc sulfide will form so which is white in color so th that kind of blackening issues will not be there so, so it is called sulfur containing enamels are there or corn enamels it is called C enamel so there is basically two kinds of enamels are there one is acidic acid resistant enamels that is regular or R enamel then there is sulfur resistant enamels or C enamel for C stands for corn because corn was initially basically the sulfur resistant enamel was developed for canned corns. The different kinds of these lacquers have uh, different colors as well. So epoxy phenolic is uh, characteristic with a golden color. Basically lacquers will have uh, its own different kinds of colors. So golden color is uh, the standard uh, color for epoxy phenolic lacquers. So color is basically is an indication of effectiveness of coating. So we need to know that whether the lacquer has been properly applied. So giving a particular pigmentation or color to the lacquer, you can make sure that the application of the lacquer is uniform, whether the lacquer is applied or not. For such purposes, different pigmentation is given to the lacquers. In such certain cans, there are also white surface, white coatings are also provided. Those white surfaces are basically made with titanium dioxide. The titanium dioxide is uh, used uh, to give that white coloration to the lacquer. Immersion coat coating can be given or different kinds of coating that spray coating, different kinds of coating methods are there. So any kind of coating methods can be used to for application of this uh, lacquer. So once the lacquer is set, that is why they are called thermosetting uh, oleoresins. Uh, so uh, if, once the dry film is set, so the component, the, the dry film weight uh, can be expressed in different methodology, like different uh, values are there. So there will be oleoresins means uh, up to 4 to 10 gram per meter square oleoresins will be there, has to be there. And vinyl, for example, if we are using vinyl, it is around 2 to 7 grams per meter square. And if you if you are using a phenolic component, it is it, generally it is between 15 to 5 gram per meter square. And if you are using epoxy component, 3 to 5 grams per meter square. This is this will be the dry film weight if you use uh, different kinds of lacquers. So this will uh, eventually determine that how much lacquer has to be applied. So in the case of uh, lacquering that we already discussed that the initially the original can, original can coatings were based on oleoresinous products made by fusing natural gums and resins and blending them with drying oil such as linseed or uh, tongue oil or Chinese wood oil. This was the initially the natural kind of oil combinations were used. For especially for internal coating we also already discussed that epoxy phenolic uh, acrylic coating uh, is there, phenolic uh, vinyl resin oleoresinous groups are used. So different kinds of materials are used for uh, as the internal coating component of the lacquers. And main problem is uh, BPA, bis bisphenol A. To reduce the health risk associated with the bisphenol A which is associated with the uh, epoxy uh, materials. So now the research is mostly going on replacing such materials. So different metal can coatings are there, uh, different kinds of coating types are there. So according to the property and the material that is we have used to prepare that particular material, the application and other properties etc will vary. So the main uh, can coating types are one, the most common is as we discussed it is epoxy phenolic. And the properties uh, of epoxy phenolic is basically that is an uh, high molecular weight epoxy resins cross-linked with phenolic resolved resins. That is what uh, the mixture is all about. And it provides good flexibility and very good pack resistance for aggressive acid products. So it is basically for acid uh, resistance uh, lacquers. 
so that is why the it is most widely used coating and it is also the color is universal golden coating for three piece and shallow drawn cans then another one is epoxy amine or epoxy acrylate it is also a high molecular weight epoxy resins which is cross linked with amino or acrylic acrylate resins and it is also it's mainly employed now in water bond coatings it is also an universal lacquer for beer and beverage cans and uh, basically it can be used in the side seam strip uh, in high solid forms for welded cans and another important one is epoxy anhydride which is it is also a high molecular epoxy resins cross linked with anhydride hardness it also have good uh, fabricability withstands beading very good chemical resistance so it is basically used as an internal white coating for three piece cans and ends and another one is uh, vinyl organosol or pvc it is basically it is a pvc or polyvinyl chloride dispersed in an appropriate solvent and stabilized with low molecular weight epoxy resin or esbo it is mainly used in drawn cans and uh, easy open ends also and it is often used over epoxy phenolic base coat and another material that can coating uses thermoset polyester the polyester resins are cross linked with the phenolic or amino resins it may contain low molecular weight epoxy resins it is very good chemical resistance good fabricability and withstands beading its application is mainly as an internal and external coating for two piece and three piece cans and ends for meat fish and vegetables another important coating material is thermoplastic polymer coating it is basically extrusion coated or laminated film of polypropylene polyester or polyamide or combination thereof so it is basically mainly used in shallow drawn cans and easy open and standard ends and another main coating material is phenolic material which is very low cost it is uh, having poor flexibility and but uh, it has uh, also good resistance particularly for aggressive foods it is mainly used in drums and pails where flexibility is not a critical factor so that conditions phenolic can be used and another one is oleoresinous it is a naturally occurring oils and fatty acids with synthetic modification it is a general purpose golden color inexpensive coating once uh, very common but now very limited use so as we discussed uh, the different purposes there one is decorative coatings and one is corrosion resistance coatings or protective coatings so corrosion resistance is one of the major physical property that we are looking for in the case of a external or decorative coating and there is a particularly different kinds of cans are uh, prepared or different kinds of materials are there for example the toyo sikon co limited the japanese company who they have developed a tulc can or is called toyo ultimate can which is uh, having a lowest of the carbon emission that is a new kind of can that is, that is been introduced low carbon emission is there in that particular can manufacturing process so it is basically a steel sheet with a polyester laminate on both sides so what happens is that uh, it is manufactured using dry forming method so no lubricant is needed so the steel sheet comes with polyester laminate on both sides so at the time of the manufacturing itself the sheet is coated with polyester on both sides so that eventually results in less uh, carbon emissions for that particular can so that is called a tulc can so that is the new kind of uh, canning systems are uh, being made since it is coated with polyester the bisphenol risk is not there so such kind of interventions or inventions are uh, being introduced right now and for this decorative purposes different kinds of printing met methodologies are used so there is basically lithography offset printing is there lithography offset printing is basically printing on flat surfaces using the color code cmyk that is basically theon magenta yellow black etc so that is called a uh, flat surface printing uh, methodology is used mainly printing is used using plastics it is basically an engraved cylinder printing methodology and also there is a lith lithography cured offset printing letter press printing these are different kinds of uh, printing methodology that is used in the case of cans so in the case of three piece cans uh, mainly it is uh, using lithography offset printing is used in the case of three piece cans but in the case of two piece cans different kinds of methods are like letter press curved offset printing lithography curved offset printing gravier printing etc are used so different kinds of uh, printing methods are there to print above the decorative coatings of the container so uh, basic decorative coatings will have a white base coat and which is overprint varnish is also applied in the case of decorative coating thank you